and His Excellency Mr. Mohamed Barkindo joins me now. He is, of course, the Secretary General of OPEC. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us, sir. When we look back on the history of the IEF, how important is it, would you say, that this organization was established all the time ago? Uh, thank you uh, very much, Etna, for having me and for seeing you at this ninth uh, meeting of the symposium of OPEC, IEA and the IEF, uh, which has now been established on the international energy calendar. As you have seen from the impressive turnout and the high number of resource persons that gathered here uh, in Riyadh. Uh, there's no doubt that uh, the uh, founding father uh, of uh, the IEF, uh, King Abdullah bin Abdulazil al Saud of blessed memory, uh, would be uh, basking uh, in uh, 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 great joy uh, to see that uh, his vision uh, is being realized uh, uh, in the years after he departed us. Uh, I wish to use this opportunity to pay tribute to King Abdullah for his visionary uh, leadership and for conceiving uh, the idea of uh, establishing the International Energy Forum, uh, which uh, has uh, established itself now uh, beyond any reasonable doubt as the umbrella institution bringing OPEC, uh, the IEA, bringing producers and consumers. And today we have seen several other organizations like the Gas Countries Exporting Forum and many other think tanks, including the EIA, all uh, participating in the interest uh, of all uh, and sundry. Now, of course, the dialogue and this particular meeting, when we look at the outlooks, compare the outlooks, contrast the outlooks, um, sometimes, you know, sometimes they're very similar. Over the years, too, we've really seen I suppose it was a, a stronger dialogue. I mean, ultimately, that's all that has really happened, the most important thing that could have happened. Um, and that was not there many years ago. Yes, uh, the product of this dialogue is the excellent outlooks uh, that we now compare uh, between OPEC, uh, IEA, the EIA, uh, assisted by all these uh, highly reputable institutions that gather here every year. Uh, we have seen the divergences that we used to witness in the past uh, gradually uh, shrinking. Uh, the objective is not to uh, ultimately produce one outlook. We do appreciate that. But uh, the objective remains that our outlook should be comparable. Uh, the baselines uh, of our projections should also be comparable. Uh, the outlooks should be based on factual data, uh, verifiable uh, data. Uh, the analysis should be grounded uh, on the models uh, that each of the institutions may deploy. Uh, but the conclusions uh, that the industry and decision makers draw uh, from this outlook should be very enriched. Now, when we look at the state of the oil market at the moment, too, how would you give us a health check on where the market is here in February? Looking back from where we came from, uh, from the inception of the implementation of the historic declaration of cooperation beginning January of 2017 to date, uh, it is the consensus in the market and the industry that uh, this innovative tool uh, has largely uh, restored stability to the oil market. Uh, what is at stake now is how to sustain this stability. And uh, this type of symposium where we sit down uh, as professionals and experts in our own rights to dispassionately uh, compare and contrast the outlook uh, assist in no small measure in helping uh, us to sustain uh, this stability going forward. It is uh, 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 work in progress and the 
continued uh, leadership of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, not only because it's hosting the IEF, but its uh, leadership role in the Declaration of Cooperation and their continuous commitment uh, to ensure that this sustainable market that we have been able to uh, achieve after the longest cycle ever uh, must be sustained going forward. Now, when we look at um, the cooperation that has been in place and this very strong cooperation and the strong compliance, really, everybody has been really doing their bit. Again, this is something that I know that you have said time and time again. You, you see the value of it. I think the market sees the value of it. Would you like to see it continue? Uh, there is no doubt that without this uh, cooperation and dialogue uh, among all stakeholders, not only between OPEC and non-OPEC in the declaration of cooperation, but between all producers, consumers, uh, oil companies, uh, institutions, uh, remain crucial, remains at the heart, remains at the heart of the multilateral system. Uh, and uh, we in OPEC are determined uh, to continue with our reach out, uh, to continue to sustain this much needed dialogue and cooperation between all parties. Now, of course, the consumer is always at the very heart of what OPEC does, what non OPEC do. What do all oil producers do, basically? Again, and you look at not just any one group of consumers, really, is it, it, it is consumers around the world that you are concerned about more than listening to any issues coming from any one specific group? I think uh, without sounding as immodest, uh, I will say that uh, not much credit is being given to OPEC uh, for its continued consideration of not only its interests as a producer group, but also interests of all other producers, including those who are not within the group. But importantly so is the interest of consumers. I want to use this medium uh, and uh, reiterate for the upteenth time that our decisions in OPEC are always in consideration of the interests of consumers. We are in the business of selling oil. Oil is in competition with other sources of energy. All the forecasts so far have shown that oil and gas will continue to dominate the energy mix for the foreseeable future. It is in our vested interest to ensure that oil remains competitive and its longevity as a source of energy is assured. Hence, the interest of consumers is always at the heart of the decisions that we take. Now we have the rest of the year ahead of us, two months in, and I know you have a very, very busy schedule here. What is uppermost on your mind as leader of the OPEC, the non-OPEC group, leaders of the OPEC or the oil producers as you continue through the year? What is the main focus for all of you as you continue the year right now? Uh, having marched through the milestones uh, in the run-up to the declaration of cooperation and its implementation, for the last uh, two years, uh, we have all agreed that we would like this collaboration, if you like, this cooperation to continue. Uh, we are now actively discussing uh, with all parties on the architecture uh, of uh, sustaining this cooperation going forward. Uh, this is of top priority to us in OPEC, uh, and we are committed to delivering on that. Uh, in addition, as I said, the sustainability of the market stability that we have been able to restore uh, is also of equal importance going forward. And the continuation of the supply adjustments, either up or down, depending on market circumstances, to ensure that the market remains stable in the interest of all parties is of uppermost importance uh, to us. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Thank you, Edna. Good to see you again.